G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. Shuck in the Corn, this is a great tune. A lot of banjo players like to pick this one, so we need something to play on the guitar. As part of this lesson, we're gonna take a look at an arrangement in the key of G that has four variations, uh, a slightly easier one, and then a, a more advanced version as well, but it's played pretty quick, so they're all pretty hard, really. Uh, we've got an A and a B variation, two of each. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at the first A variation, but if you head to PickingLessons.com, you will find the tablature that we're working from there, and in the members section, you'll find the next videos for this lesson where we'll break down all the variations and, and look at what we need to be able to play this tune. So PickingLessons.com. Okay, so let's start out here in this video though with a slow playthrough of the first part A variation. Uh, and then we'll break it down, have a look at some of the licks. There's a bunch of licks in here that we can use elsewhere as well. So we'll talk about that as we go through. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so there was the first variation of part A here, nice and slow. Now we are in the key of G, and if you're not familiar with shucking the corn, it's basically a 12 bar blues in the key of G. So what we end up with is a chord progression following four measures of G, uh, two of C, two of G, two of D. Around we go throughout the whole tune. So a 12 bar blues style chord progression played in this case like a bluegrass style. Now, a lot of banjo players do pick this one and we've taken some of the melody that they usually play to form some of this break. Elsewhere, there are just some cool guitar licks and then we've got some more bluesy chromatic licks in there as well. You can certainly pull these licks out as you learn them and, and reuse them elsewhere. So keep that in mind. Just think about, okay, we're over a G chord. We've got a G lick. Great, it's an idea that you can use somewhere else. So while we're learning Shackle the Corn, you're actually also learning a bunch of licks that would suit in a bluegrass style. Let's have a look at the first four measures. First four measures over G. Nice and open there, really built for playing at a faster tempo. We're not playing too many notes, it's all fairly straightforward. Watch that hammer on there. In that pickup, don't rush through it. So one, two, three, four. Or for in cut time as it's marked there, one, two, so in cut time we're feeling two beats per measure. But as we're learning it slowly, let's, let's count it in four just to make it easier. So one, two, three, four. Same for the slide in measure one. One and two. Not to rush that slide, really measure it out over the two eighth notes. And then those quarter notes. So one and two and three, four. So measure two. So nice and open there. It really is fairly simple, but remember we're gonna play it at a faster tempo. So the whole goal of this version of the break was to keep it really quite straightforward and basic so that we can play it at a fast tempo. Watch your picking. Down, down, up, down, 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 down. A lot of down strokes. So you can see there, technically it's fairly straightforward, but remember we are aiming to play it faster. We repeat that little idea in measure three. Into measure four, now this is a great idea if you're faced with a G7 change, this will usually happen before a C chord a lot of the time. This is a great lick for that G7. Heading over to the C, so one, two, and three, four, and first beat over C there. We're about to hit launch into the C uh, variation. A little bit of cross picking, but not too much. Again, faster tempo, keeping it fairly simple. So picking hand, down, down, up, down, down, up, down to the next measure. All right, so four measures of G there. Take those slowly, do get to know them, but it is pretty straightforward at a slow tempo. Just work on keeping it really smooth and stay relaxed as you're practicing to build up the speed. Let's look at what's happening here in the C measure. First of the two measures here of C. A nice syncopated idea that works great over a C chord. 
So in the key of G, the C chord will come in quite often, but usually a lot of the time, not for very long. So in this case, it's two measures. First measure, just a nice syncopated uh, back and forth between two of the notes in the C chord. I'm picking that as a down, up, up, down, down. You could change your picking. That would be okay. This is a fairly advanced tune, so if you're attempting to play this shuck in the corn, you can probably vary some of your picking. So an idea there would be perhaps down, up, down, up. Repeat the same idea. Just watch the rhythm though. One and two and three. So you're starting to work against the pulse when you apply it like that. Personally, I still like to go down, up, up, down, just to match that rhythm structure that we're following anyway. So C lick, great idea. You could use that over a D chord if you move it along a tone. Really nice idea for a short, short idea. We're about to, we've got another measure of C, but that's leading us back to G. So this next lick is actually uh, structured in a way that it gets us back into the G chord next. So what we have here in measure six, rest into measure seven. So measure six is actually setting us up for that return to G. Two measures of C, returning to G in measure seven. Have a listen, ready and. So as a pair of licks there on C, really the first one is over the C, the next one is, okay, we're about to head back to G. That's the idea for that one. The picking there, they're two grace notes. Picked on the up, on the off beat, so I'm using an upstroke. Rest and two and three and four and to the G. Classic G run here. We've got a few of these in this tune. They sound awesome. You hear them a lot in bluegrass. It's a real flavor of the guitar style of playing. So we want to include those as well. We'll come back and play through this in a moment. So uh, heading now towards a D. So we're still over a G chord, but this next measure, measure eight, we have this chromatic run. So D chord is where we're going. We're going to use these chromatic notes from the F to the E, to the E flat, to the D. So we've, we've set up our change to hit that open D note at the change of the D chord. So the two measures of G into D. It's really sending us in that direction to the D chord. So these licks, like I said, they're really universal. Most of them in here, they are. Just bear in mind that if we're heading somewhere, we're heading to a G, heading to a D, often and happening in this arrangement as well. Often you'll play a, a lick that leads you there rather than continuing just over a G lick, then switch straight to D. Uh, now, on the D lick, we have something similar here, heading back to G. So the first portion of the D, all D sort of sounds there. We're focusing on the, the open D string, the octave of the D, the flat three, the F, flicking back to the root note. But then we kind of launch into the G again. So again, we're kind of starting to, to, to map our way back to the G chord on that second measure of D. So the two together. First part D, then start to head your way back to G. Uh, that's very similar to a lot of banjo licks, that one too. So we've modeled some of these licks on the banjo licks other just guitar type licks in bluegrass, but also some extra licks in there that sort of complement what we're doing as well. Once we get to the end here, we've got two measures of G to close out the 12 bar, another G lick. And then basically that same pickup with that little syncopated pickup there on the upstroke. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. Hit the repeat uh, and then we'll go back so in the recording, I played basically one A, one B, the variation of A and variation of B. The form of this tune you hear in, in several different ways. Probably one of the more common ways is that I actually play part A twice, then the part B variation, which we'll look at in the next lesson. So often you hear instrumentalists going around three times, A, A, B, and you kind of follow that form, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, over the 12 bar repeating through. And the form for this, Melody through here for part A, this loose melody here, is really twice, and then we hear the variation. 
you can put it together however you wish. You, you do hear it in different ways. Sometimes you just hear two repeats, one A, one B, or just two A's, um, sometimes two B's. Once you start playing the tune, you get familiar with it. Listen to some versions, listen to Scruggs, listen to um, all those great banjo players, listen to whatever you can get your hands on because really it's a great tune, awesome fun to play. But the form does change, but just again, most commonly what you hear is two A's and a B, and that's what we're gonna sort of think about here. So in the tablature, you'll see that there's a repeat on part A. We'll go back for a second time, play that before we go into part B. And then we'll do the same on the variations of A and B as well. Okay, shaking the corn. Now, take your time with this first section. It is kind of straightforward. We've got some tricky little licks in there. Work on those. Righto, work on the picking hand. Like, just take it slow. Take it slow, get to know them because you need to know them really well. If you're gonna to attempt to play this up to speed, you're gonna to have to really uh, break them down slowly, learn them first string them together, then bring the tempo up as you go, making sure that your technique and your fingers and your right hand are all there, holding it together. All right, now if you head to pickandlessons.com, we're gonna break down the next three variations. So there's a B, uh, another A, and another B as well. You'll also have a backing track and a play-along track there to use uh, in the member section there. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.